It's 5.30 a.m. and I'm here coming back from a run. There is nothing better than standing here and watching the sun coming up. Hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Rupen. I'm an oncologist in my training and I'm very passionate about exercise and how it can help cancer patients. In the previous video I talked about how exercise can help cancer survivors but today I'm gonna to focus on how exercise can prevent cancer so let's go to the office and let's talk about it and we are back to the office after the run I took a shower I'm very excited I was looking into many studies some of them are systematic reviews and some of them are review papers that looked into exercise and how it can help to prevent cancer today we're going to talk about these studies Remember that these videos are part of my passion and commitment of bringing absolutely free information to cancer patients. These videos are not part of my research and my job at the hospital. They are my commitment and my passion to help cancer patients in lifestyle management to help prevent and manage cancer. Which type of cancers can be prevented by exercise? There are many types of cancers that can be prevented by exercise. We do have a strong evidence proved by research and randomized clinical trials and different types of studies that bladder cancer can be prevented or the incidence can be reduced by exercise. Breast cancer and colon cancer. The interesting thing about breast cancer and colon cancer is there is a dose response relationship. That means that the more you exercise, the less risk there will be for breast cancer and colon cancer development in the future. Endometrial cancer as well can be prevented by exercise. Endometrium is the lining that is just in the bottom of the uterus. Um, so endometrial cancer can also be prevented by exercise. Esophageal cancer can be prevented by exercise or the incidence can be reduced by exercise. When it comes to esophageal cancer, we have two types. We have adenocarcinoma and you have a squamous cell carcinoma. And the evidence that we have currently in this day and age that exercise can help to prevent adenocarcinoma type esophageal cancer. Gastric cancer incidence can also be decreased by exercise. Lung cancer incidence can also be decreased by exercise. That being said, okay, we don't have evidence that exercise can help reduce or prevent other cancers, but does that, that does not mean that if you exercise, you will not affect the risk of decreasing those types of cancer. The problem is we don't have enough evidence, for example, to say that exercise might help to prevent sarcoma incidence or brain cancer incidence because those cancers are rare and we haven't studied the relationship between exercise and other types of cancers or we don't have enough data to tell you that if you exercise, you will reduce the risk of these types of cancers. In my opinion, exercise can help reduce many types of cancers, even those that we don't have evidence for. But remember, these are my opinions, okay? So the cancers that we have evidence for are bladder cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, endometrial cancer, esophageal cancer, gastric cancer, and lung cancer. Now let's talk about two common cancers that can be prevented or the incidence can be reduced by exercise. Breast cancer and colon cancer. Let's start by talking about breast cancer. Before talking about how breast cancer can be prevented by exercise, I want to talk about two basic physiology concepts. First, how breast cancer can grow with hormones or via hormones. Second is immunotherapies and how immune system can help fight cancer. Okay, so basic physiology principle number one. Okay, breast cancer usually arises when one of the cells in the breast divides without any control from the body. That cells multiply and make a tumor and that tumor can grow and can invade the breast and other tissues. Most of breast cancers are sensitive to hormones, around 70% to 80%. And most responsible hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And that's why if you are a person who survived breast cancer, you will always, or you're going to be here that, or if you're a patient who is experiencing breast cancer, you will hear that your oncologist is telling you about your breast cancer, if it is hormone sensitive or not hormone sensitive. So by hormone sensitive, we mean that 
The cancer growth depends on estrogen and progesterone mainly. Those are the two hormones that can help to grow the cancer. What we can do to treat hormone-sensitive breast cancer, you name it, we can cut the hormones. How estrogen is produced in the body is usually produced by the ovaries and then it can become active through other metabolism and other changes that happens to the hormone itself in the fat tissue. So the fat tissue plays a crucial role in making estrogen. In another word, if you have less fat tissue, less adipose tissue, the amount of estrogen in the body will be lower. This is physiology concept number one. Physiology concept number two, the immune system and how it fights cancers. In the last five years or more, we discovered a, around five to ten years, I would say, we discovered a group of therapies that changed how we treat cancer. They are called immunotherapies. What immunotherapies do, they mainly boost the immune system to fight cancer. And this is nothing in you. Our body, in any given moment, in any given second, always have cancer cells, but the immune system fights cancer cells. When your immune system becomes weaker because of mechanisms that the cancer cells develop, the, the cancer cells can grow and can invade the body. What can we do in oncology is we can give some medication called immunotherapies that can boost the immune system to fight cancer. Now, after talking about those two important concepts, now let's dive in and let's talk about breast cancer. First, what are the risk factors of breast cancer? There are many risk factors of breast cancer and I made many videos about that. You can check them here. Obesity can increase the risk of breast cancer by increasing the fat tissue and that fat tissue plays a crucial role in the development of estrogen and that estrogen can help the growth of breast cancer. How exercise can help decrease the incidence of breast cancer is exercise reduces amount of hormones like insulin-like growth factor. Insulin-like growth factor is one of the hormones and insulin itself as well, those two hormones play a crucial role in the development of many cancers. Exercise reduces the amount of those hormones. Insulin does not only help you to digest carbohydrates, insulin also can contribute to the growth of cells and can contribute to the growth of cancer cells. Many studies have shown that exercise can help to boost the immune system. The studies showed that exercise increased the number of immune cells in the natural circulation, especially some immune cells that we call the natural killers and some type of immune cells called the CD4 cells. When the number of natural killers and the CD4 cells increase in the circulation, these cells can help fight cancer cells. Even in patients who have cancer, when they exercise, the number of immune cells is increased in the circulation. Not only that, there is a study that, were, that was done in women in California, and this study showed that exercise reduces the risk of a breast cancer type that is not hormone sensitive, and we call this triple negative breast cancer. Breast cancer that has no receptor to hormones and no other receptors that can we target, and so it's usually aggressive type of cancer. But that being said, the studies have shown that exercise reduces the incidence of triple negative breast cancer. The question is, what type of exercise and for how long and what type of intensity is better for you? The answer is physical activity for at least 30 minutes. Actually, it is better if it is 45 to 60 minutes. At least five days per week has been shown that it reduces the incidence of breast cancer. But when it comes to the type of exercise, I didn't find studies that looked specifically into the type of exercise and the incidence of breast cancer. If you find them, please mention them in the comments below. But I found that endurance versus aerobic training in cancer patients, the aerobic training helped to reduce the incidence of, or helped to reduce the recurrence of breast cancer more than endurance training. So if you do brisk walking, biking, running, this will have more beneficial effect in preventing breast cancer recurrence when compared to weightlifting. And the 
sweet spot is 300 minutes per week, which is around 60 minutes per day, or you can say 45 minutes to 50 minutes per day if you're going to do it seven days a week, or if you're going to do it one hour per day, so it's going to be five days a week. Okay, so 300 minutes of training, aerobic training has been shown that it helps patients with breast cancer, it, it can prevent its recurrence, and we have data that shows 45 to 60 minutes of training can help the, to prevent the incidence of breast cancer. Now let's talk about colon cancer. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer worldwide. It is the second leading cause of cancer death worldwide. There are many risk factors that can lead to colon cancer or contribute to colon cancer. Low fiber diet and high fat diet, sedentary lifestyle, diabetes, obesity, smoking, alcohol, advanced age, and inflammatory bowel disease. A studies has shown that exercise reduced the incidence and prevent colon cancer happening by several mechanisms. One, exercise can help reduce the number of polyps. What is polyps? Polyps is the baby of cancer. In a colon, the lining can grow and can become cancer. But before becoming a cancer, when it is a small, we call that a polyp. And no one should die from colon cancer because colon cancer is one of the most preventable cancers out there. We can reduce, we can detect it early with fecal occult blood testing or colonoscopy, which we go with a camera and the tube into the inside of the colon lining and we can find those polyps and can remove them. So those polyps are a small early stage of cancer, but exercise has been shown to decrease the number of polyps. And this is one of the mechanisms that exercise can reduce the incidence of colon cancer. The second thing is exercise help reduce inflammation. But what is inflammation? Inflammation is one of those words that is overused. Let's simplify it. Inflammation is the state where your immune system becomes active in the body. And that happens when your immune systems try to attack a foreign object or a foreign body. Let's say you have a cut in your hand and your hand is open, so there are bacteria, and you're going to see some redness around the wound. And that's inflammation because your immune system is active and trying to fight the bacteria that are trying to go inside your body through that wound. The same applies to the fat tissue and excessive amount of fat tissue um, uh, in our body when we have too much fat that is considered foreign body to the immune system and your immune system tries to attack that foreign body which is the fat tissue and you're going to notice that there are several or specific types of white blood cells called the macrophages the number of macrophages increase in the circulation and when there is a higher amount of fat tissue the macrophages releases hormones and releases other oxidizing substances that can lead to DNA damage in many cells in the body and that can trigger cancer. That being said, exercise can help to regulate the immune system. Just like breast cancer, exercise can help to calm down and suppress down that excessive inflammation that happens with excessive fat tissue and also can reduce the fat tissue which also contribute to development of cancer. So as you see the fat tissue itself not only contribute to the development of breast cancer but also the contribute to the development of colon cancer and many other cancers out there. Another mechanism is as I said in the breast cancer part exercise help to reduce insulin but also help to reduce the risk of developing diabetes and obesity and remember the risk factors for colon cancer are diabetes, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. So by exercise, you don't only fight colon cancer or prevent colon cancer from happening, but also you fight other comorbidities that can lead to colon cancer. The sweet question is, how much do I need to exercise and for how long? And the same answer as it applies to breast cancer is it applies to colon cancer. Usually the sweetest spot is around 300 minutes of exercise of aerobic training, 300 minutes of exercise per week of aerobic training. It has been shown that aerobic training, it can help to prevent the incidence of colon cancer. We don't have enough data about weightlifting and endurance, uh, sorry, uh, weightlifting and going to the gym or lifting heavy objects and how that can prevent colon cancer. It's still debatable. 
but we do have enough data to say that running, uh, walking, brisk walking, dancing, biking, those types of exercise reduce instances of um, colon cancer. And usually you need to do them like it should be moderate intensity exercise. Okay, so not to the degree where you can talk and not to the degree where you are very comfortable and you can hold a conversation. It should be somewhere in between. Okay, so that sweet spot of exercise, 300 minutes per week, aerobic exercise, can help to prevent colon cancer from happening. As we wrap up, I want to reaffirm the importance of knowledge in managing someone's health. Understanding your body and the positive impact of exercise can truly be empowering for those who are battling cancer. Stay active, stay informed, and most importantly, take care of your health, and I will see you in the next video.